So what really is the difference between millionaires, billionaires, and middle class, and the broke? Is it the trust fund? Is it the investments? Is it the credit score? Is it the real estate? Well, in this episode of the 7 Fair Squad Wealth and Wisdom Series, we'll discuss 10 more things that millionaires do that other people do not, starting in three, two, one. Let's go. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And uh, we're listening to you because in a previous episode, we did part one of this and we saw your comments, you're all right here. And we wanna make sure that we're listening to you and paying attention to you because there's so much more in the book of Proverbs that is talking about wealth, wisdom, prosperity, generational wealth creation, more than most people think that's actually in the Bible. So if you haven't done so already, if you're watching this video, please consider hitting like to help us spread this message of faith-based millionaires. And if you've watched a couple of our videos, please consider hitting subscribe. All right, so let's get into it. So we are now on week 19, Proverbs 19. We're doing a proverb a week for 31 weeks. There's 31 Proverbs in the Bible. And why should we care about Proverbs in the Bible? Well, because King Solomon, who's regarded as the wisest and richest king who ever lived, actually wrote the book of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. So when we're looking at Proverbs, it's less about investments, it's less about strategy, it's less about you know, where to put your money to grow your credit score, to grow your estate. It's about the attitude and behaviors and perspective about money and wealth creation. So what am I talking about? Let's get into it. There are behaviors between rich people versus poor people when it comes to money. Let's break it down. Proverbs 19 verse one, it reads like this. Better is the poor who walks in his integrity than one who is perverse in his lips and is a fool. So there's a difference between you saying, listen, man, I may not be where I want to be today, but you know what? I'm not gonna cut corners. I'm not gonna cheat. I'm not gonna rob a bank. I'm gonna make sure I find out what I don't know and make sure I apply it into my life right now. Number two, wealth makes friends. Yep, poor and poorness isolates you. So let's take a look at Proverbs 19, verse four. It reads like this. Wealth makes many friends, but the poor is separated from his friend. Listen, this is not rocket science. If you got money, if you got wealth, people want to be around you. And by the way, wealth is more than just financial assets. It's attitude, it's character, it's how you treat other people. So if you're looking at wealth as a tool for you, put in the comment section below this affirmation. I am using wealth to make friends and build bridges. I am using wealth to make friends and build bridges. If that's you, put it in the comment section below. Number three, poor is not attractive. What am I talking about? Proverbs 19, verses seven, it reads like this. All of the brothers of the poor hate him. How much more do his friends go far from him? He may pursue them with words, yet they abandon him. Listen, say, listen, man, woe is me. I've been through some stuff. Come on, you don't know what I'm going through. Yet, and everybody says like, yeah, you think you're the only one? You think you're the only one that goes through problems? You know, how arrogant of you to think you're the only one to go through some problems. And so in that process, the poor tends to isolate people. And guess who the poor tends to attract to as well? A lot of people who think poor, who act poor, who say, you know, what was me? Nobody can help me out. I'm expecting stuff. I feel entitled to certain things. And even the brothers of the poor say, you know what? We're not entitled to anything. Let's get up and get to work. Number four, get wisdom, not get money, not get a, a higher credit score, not get real estate. What does he talk about? What does King Solomon talk about in terms of getting wisdom? He's really talking about self-awareness and taking care of yourself. He looks at Proverbs chapter 19, verse eight. It reads like this. He who gets wisdom loves his own soul. He who keeps understanding will find good. And if we go back to Proverbs chapter one, King Solomon's instructing his sons. The, you know, King Solomon is writing these words, which I call the OG mean tweets. And he's telling his sons, he's telling his children, if you're going to get something, get wisdom and get understanding. Number five, luxury doesn't fit a fool. Proverbs 19, verse 10, it reads like this. Luxury is not fitting a fool, fool, much less for a servant to rule over a prince, to rule over a prince. Think about this, imagine a servant ruling over a prince, a servant having a decision-making process for a prince who's about to be a king one day. It doesn't make sense, does it? And some of you guys think, oh man, you know, I look good in this thing, but listen, Luxury does not befit a fool. We've been going over these reaction videos, how, how some of these hip hop artists and celebrities and entertainers look the part, they see the part, they dress the part, but man, that luxury is just covering behaviors that later on down the road, their behaviors will expose them. Number six, riches come from fathers. Really? Riches come from fathers, interesting, but what does come from God? Proverbs chapter 19, verse 14, it reads like this. 
Houses and riches are an inheritance from fathers, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. And for some of you who've been seeking and searching, I hope and pray that you find a prudent wife. And the person to make the biggest mistake when it comes to this is yours truly. I went to go get married in the most wrong ways, and I hope that you learn from my bad example what not to do. Now, if you feel that your wealth is coming from a source greater than yourself, or you'd like to seek a source greater than what you thought it'd be, put in the comment section below this affirmation, I'm receiving my wealth from a source greater than me, put in the comment section below. Number seven, importance of having wise counsel around you. What is the power of having wise counsel around you? Let's look at Proverbs 19, verses 20 to 22, and then verse 27. They read like this. Listen to counsel and receive instruction that you may be wise in your latter days. There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel that will stand. What is desired in a man is kindness, and a poor man is better than a liar. Let's go to 27. Cease listening to instruction, my son, and you will stray from the words of knowledge. <laughs> so the question is, who are you listening to? Is the blind leading the blind? Is the broke leading the broke? So I hope that you look at these videos. And that you don't look at me for your counsel. That you don't look at me for instruction. That you don't look at me. I'm just exposing you to a book in the Bible that I hope that you don't depend on me to read for you and this is it. I hope that you take out your Bible or you get a Bible and you look at Proverbs and you look at what he has to say about building his wealth and building his life of riches, wealth, prosperity, happiness, enjoyment. Read what he has to say. What is your counsel? Who are you listening to? Who are you keeping around you? Because it's one thing to be around a mentor. It's one thing to be around wise counsel. But how do you keep them around you? And I hope that you find that answer in your journey as you keep reading and dive into the book of Proverbs. Let's look at what sleeping and laziness and being idle, just hanging out, has to do with your wealth building or anti-wealth building. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 19, verse 15. It reads like this. Laziness casts one into a deep sleep, and an idle person will suffer hunger. So you remember those days where you slept until noon, one o'clock, two o'clock? Well, that is a version of laziness. It casts you into a deep sleep. So if you don't know what you want in your life, you don't know where you're going, or you're not searching and discovering your purpose, and when you find your purpose, man, it makes you jump out of bed every morning, you will be lazy. You know, I didn't find out what my purpose was in life until I had kids. And then I realized I didn't have time to sit around. I had to get to work, I had to provide I want to make sure it was very important to me. I don't know what inspired me about this, but I didn't want to make other heroes and celebrities and actors that people see on TV and, ra and hear on radio and then see in the movies or right now see on YouTube. I don't want other people out in my home to be the most celebrated person to my children. I wanted my children to look up at me and say, man, my father's setting an example. My dad's setting an example. I'm giving to my kids what I didn't get when I was a kid. So some of you might be thinking that way and some of you may not be, but hopefully you figure out what that purpose is. You figure out what you want. You figure out the, the strategy to get there. You get clear on your next moves. So therefore, it doesn't cause you to be lazy. It causes you to be fired up about the next day. Number two, discretion. Let's look at Proverbs 19, verse 11. It reads like this. The discretion of a man makes him slow to anger and his glory is to overlook a transgression. You know, my wife and I were talking last night. I can't tell you how many times that I've bounced my thoughts and ideas off my wife, a prudent wife, which I thank God for her coming into my life, which is a gift from God. And I'll honor it as such. And when I'm looking at the conversation I have with my wife, I'm the conversation I have with my, my mentors and people that I take counsel from, I can't tell you how many times I feel my own anger and wrath coming up. Like I'm pissed off about a situation. I'm angry about a situation. What, you come cross me? I'm gonna come after you. And in those conversations, sometimes that's my attitude. Again, the person that works on this the most, in my opinion, has to be yourself. It can't be somebody working you the most. You gotta be working yourself the most. And I find myself, based on how I grew up and you know, the times I served in the military, because I was an angry young man when I entered the military. And the Marine Corps did nothing but hone that anger for its benefit. And I've had to work on that, those issues. I had to work, which by the way, served the military great, which served our country great, which served my unit great. But when it comes to raising your children and running a business and dealing with people and dealing with human nature and human behaviors, it doesn't serve you so as much if you act in wrath and anger and short-sightedness all the time. That's why it's so important to have wise counsel around you. I thank God for my counselors. I thank God for my mentors. And I thank God 
for my wife because they give me outside perspective of how to act in other ways to look at things. And sometimes when they give me counsel, I don't want to take it right away. That's the stubbornness in me too as well. So again, the person that works on this a lot is yours truly because I've made a lot of mistakes. Uh, number three, chasing and discipline. What does chasing mean? I look at the word, this word chasing because I'm reading this Bible, this New King James Version, and my vocabulary isn't that extensive. So let's take a look at the word chasing. It is defined as this. Have a restraining or moderating effect on. And another definition here is having discipline or punishment. So chasing, when I'm looking at the word chasing, let's look at Proverbs 19, verse 18 and 26. They read like this. Chasing your son while there is hope, and do not set your heart on his destruction. 26. He who mistreats his father and chases away his mother is a son who causes shame and brings reproach. So when I'm looking at this, I didn't have the greatest relationship with my parents growing up. I didn't have the greatest relationship with people of authority and, and, and older relatives in, in my life. Uh, the military did a good job of squaring that away. Uh, but at the same time too, now, how do I act now as a man? How do I act now as an entrepreneur, as a father, as a husband, as a man in our community? Somebody that people uh, take counsel from running a business. So these are things that I look at also. So there's a, not only a relationship between you and your son, but how is your relationship with your parents? So people often think that the craziness goes going on in the world because, oh man, we need more cops to help our community. No, we need more parents taking responsibility of chastening and disciplining their children and also them too as well, because listen, your children won't necessarily listen to you based on what you tell them, but also they need to see you honoring your mother, honoring your father as much difficulty you had with them growing up, because kids, I, from what I understand and what I've experienced, is that they don't listen to what you say, they care more about what you do. And some of my final thoughts as I wrap up here in uh, Proverbs 19, money is more than just about credit score. It's more than just about insurance and real estate and net worth and collectibles and precious metals and Bitcoin and what you have in your wallet. Money, if you want to grow it, attract it, manifest it, compound it and transfer it to the next generation for multiple generations, money is more about attitude. It's more about mindset. It's about behavior and less about quantity. Because when you find a quality in your relationship with your creator, you find quality in your relationship of understanding about finances and understanding how much it can control you or how much it can free you. Your attitude about it will change and it will continue to compound and manifest or that compound and manifesting can work in a positive or the negative. Again, your choice. The second thought I have here as I wrap up is financial literacy and generational wealth building. There's many different sides. On one side, you've got awareness. That's literacy. You've got knowledge, that's literacy. You've got behaviors and actions, that's literacy. What counters that literacy, what counters this growth, what works opposite against this, again, is you saying, you know what? It's about my race, man. It's about my ethnicity. It's about my socioeconomic upbringing, man. It's about my status, yo. It's about, man, where I began. You just don't understand. Oh, you don't know my, my struggles. And listen, we all got struggles. Every ethnic group in the world has struggles challenges, has his own weird things that they go on between parents and upbringing and, and, and dealings with relatives. But if you, if you ground yourself, not necessarily on your status, your race, your ethnicity, your upbringing, your, 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 the fact that you began, but you ground it on the Word of God, you ground it on universal truths, values, and principles that has stood, that withstood the test of humankind. Because the reason why I started d diving deep into Proverbs, because I didn't just want to go about running my life, my business, my family, my finances, just trying to be a good person. Just trying to do the right thing. Because I realized over time, I can gravitate away from where I started because I'm not anchored. But if I'm anchored on values and principles that has withstood the test of time, which I consider the Word of God, well, I'm not trying to shove this thing down your throat, but I'm just telling you that there's things in here about money, about wealth building, about behaviors, about wealth creation that will serve you long, regardless sometimes if you even go to church on Sundays. Because I've seen this in my career. I've seen people here not even have a faith or not even have a church or a pastor or a priest in their life, but yet they follow universal truths 
without even realizing the final biblical universal truths in principle. So that's my encouragement to you. And here in 2022, at the recording of this video, if you're looking at things right now to fight inflation, you're looking at things right now to fight and combat what's going on with this war in Ukraine and the craziness we've, we had to deal with the last couple of years through the coronavirus and lockdowns and shutdowns and supply chain and all this stuff in the era of the Great Reset, I hope you reset your perspective, how you think about money, how you feel about money, how you behave about money, how you act about money so that for you it can have greater results in your life. With that being said, guys, I hope this has helped you out somehow, some way. If it has, please consider hitting like and dropping a comment below. If you've watched a couple of our videos and you haven't done so already, please consider hitting subscribe. Before I let you go, please check out these other two videos here of the Wealth and Wisdom series here on the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel. Again, a probable week for the next 31 weeks and we're more than halfway through this. So I appreciate you guys. If you've been following since the beginning, I want to know too as well. If you've been following since the beginning, please let me know in the comment section. I read them, I watch them, we do our very best to reply to them as well. From Dallas, Texas, guys, I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. See you next week.